Hey, what's going on team? It's Ricky with Tackwood Solutions. I hope that you guys are all having an amazing day. Today, it is May 29th. It is a Friday. And like many of you guys are noticing, it is our free live trading session. So I really hope that this overall video just gets you one step closer to your overall goals. And if you do, just make sure you smash that like button, letting us know that you guys would like us to continue to host these free live trading sessions. And <laughs> what's going on guys so i'm very excited to see what the overall market has to offer i'm going to start sharing my screen so you guys can see exactly what it is that i'm looking at for those that love to ask i'm using the td ameritrade think or swim platform just so you could see uh just like we start off every morning i have no positions no open positions no working orders no filled orders i wanted to start off fresh just like we do every morning with the learn plan profit group and i wanted to welcome those that are tuning in for the first time so I'm actually gonna just pause this real quick. Here we go. And if you're tuning in for the first time, don't be shy, feel free to say hello. And uh, some pretty crazy movement on natural gas. Natural gas right around six o'clock, it was showing signs of an uptrend. It did a lot of consolidation and then aggressively began to sell off. So let's see what we got going on today. So we got we got Killer Cheese here, we got Nico, we got Dan the Man, Sam, we got Ta, let's see. Robert, yeah, quite a bit of people tuning in. I like it. So thank you for the turnout. Thank you guys for waking up so early. I know it's quite early, especially if you guys are in the West Coast. Uh, what's going on, Eddie? What's going on, Kevin? What's going on, Acacia? What's up? What's up? What's up, <laughs> what's up Matthew? Uh, let's see. Jason, Lauren, Lo uh, Louis. Oh, man. Looking into the matrix right now. Here we go. What's going on, Kenzie? Welcome, welcome. Omar, Ashley. Dimitri, Maddie, Alan, Miguel, Morgan, Maya, I think it was. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best right now. But um, altogether, I really do appreciate you guys tuning on in. One of the things that I do want to ask you is there are a couple things we just updated in the description. If you guys would like to refresh your screen or at any given time throughout the live stream, if you see the quality of the live stream begin to slow down, just refresh your screen and that should reset the overall quality. On top of that, like you guys know, every single uh, free live trading session, we host our biggest sell ever. This is only for those that have been waiting for our biggest sell. It's $75 off, we open up 20 spots every single time at the end of the month. So if you've been waiting for a self to join the Learn Plan Profit team, you could refresh your screen and that's gonna be that first link down below. If you're maybe not ready to join the Learn Plan Profit team but you have some questions, join our free Discord chat and that's that second link down below. So right now, let's go ahead and get right to it. I'm excited to see what overall natural gas has to offer. Right now, natural gas is non-stop selling off. If I'm not mistaken, it just made new lows. Yep, look at that. 1.783 and this is perfect because in yesterday's video that I uploaded one of the things that a lot of people were bringing up is that hey natural gas for the past you know three to uh, what is it two to three months has had a very common support level at 1.80 and I do agree with you guys I do agree 100% but one of the things that we have to understand is that just like you know three to four months ago the overall lows was two dollars for natural gas but then it still made new lows just because something is oversold doesn't make it a good buy because it can continue to sell off and that's something that i've learned the hard way through experience and this is why i think these like live trading sessions are so important because they're real time and they're daily reminders for everyone that tunes on in um, on how important it is to stay disciplined, right? That the overall direction, you know, I'm not saying that you can't make money off of natural gas right now or that you can't make money off of you gas, which goes up when natural gas goes up. But one of the things that I'm just trying to remind you is that, you know, with no indication of any form of support, it just makes it a little bit more difficult. And maybe if you're a complete beginner and you have a little bit more trouble understanding where to buy and where to sell, it might not be the best option for you. And there it goes. Natural gas is very volatile. One of the things that I, I want to remind you as well is how important it is when it comes down to uh, the overall idea of um, waiting for confirmation and with the overall idea of um, how natural gas is currently trading right now. Natural gas is very volatile. So with that overall idea, it, it's so important to watch your position size. How many of you guys that are tuning in right now um, have ever struggled with taking a position because you 
your position size is just a little bit too aggressive. Is that is that just is that just me, or I have noticed at least in my experience, if this is something that you've like uh, struggled with before, is how important it is to be careful with your position size because when you have a very large position size, all you're thinking about is how much money you have on the line, how much money you can make, how much money you can lose. It's emotional, right? Especially if you're newer to the game. But one of the things that we always re remind you is you have nothing but time. You know, if you're learning how to trade, focus on the learning part. And uh, what's going on, Oakley? What's up? What's up? Uh, but yeah, it just it, it's not to say that you, you can't perform well with a larger dollar amount at risk. All I'm here to remind you is in my experience and in many others, when you trade with a very large position size, it just makes it a little bit more difficult to stay cool, calm and collected. So one of the things that I like to do every morning, first of all, I'm not under the PDT rule. So that's something that you have to understand. But as of right now, natural gas is trying to show some signs of a support. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna warm up for the day. So I'm gonna take a very small position size. I'm gonna do 100 shares. So I'm gonna do 100 shares. I'll do it with a market order. And this should be right around 1370. So I'll get filled with, uh, so that was 1368. And as of right now, it's still dropping. But just like we know, so one of the things that I wanted to share with you is although I am warming up in the morning, what's the whole point, right? If I'm a professional athlete, what's the whole point of warming up, right? It's I might be having a game, right? right um, and I need to make sure that when it comes down to my overall performance, that, you know, I am at least like refined in the ideas and the best practices that work well for me. So what I'm here to share with you is by myself trying to warm up every morning because every day as a day trader brings new challenges. This is something that you have to get through your head. It doesn't matter how much money I made yesterday, right? I made $1,200 yesterday. I made over $2,000 a day before. It doesn't matter how much money I made last week. It doesn't even matter if, if you lost money last week. Every single day presents new challenges as day traders. As of right now, natural gas just made 180 day lows. I would have to say right now, the volatility is a little bit more on the crazier side. So this is why I'm, I'm being so careful with watching my position size, because I do agree. Natural gas can drop right now, you guys can drop right now, and one of the things that I must do is have some form of risk management. So I can click 100% here, I can click an overall stop loss. So what this allows me to do is set a, uh, placement of where it is that I want to cut losses if it drops below that specific price point. So right now, again, I'm just warming up. So I'm going to put it right around this general area. So if it drops below this general area, my stop loss will get triggered. But as of right now, I should be up on my position and I'm not up very much as my position size is not very much. Uh, one of the things that I'm seeing right now is that it's trying to find signs of a support. I'm going to set my alert. And if we get proper indication of a reversal, then I'll add more to my position size. We've talked about it before in, in multiple videos, right? That you guys have watched from my, uh, from my own on YouTube. It's the overall idea of the three stages of a reversal, rejection, consolidation, right? When it's trying to find a support and then confirmation. And as of right now, we're waiting for that confirmation and there it goes. So I'm going to add a little bit more to my position size right on over here. So I'm going to add, there it goes. So we're right at the EMA line and one of the things that we have to understand is that it can get rejected here and based off of previous patterns, if you guys can see right on over here and again, 500 shares is not make it or break it for me. I can trade up to 4,000 shares if I wanted to of you guys. So I'm still being in a sense cautious with my overall position size. Um, I'm not, you know, as it's beginning to indicate more signs of an uptrend, I will be more willing to, you know, put more money, right? If obviously if something is making me money, I would most likely be a little bit more eager to put more money on the line. So here it goes, but look, there it goes. It's, it's showing signs of a potential rejection. So this is something that I have to take into consideration. And now that my position size changed, I'm gonna have to make sure that my overall stop loss changed. So I can change my position size or my stop loss to 600 and I can put this at 59. So there it goes. So my stop loss just got updated. Now it's 600 shares. So my overall risk management is in place. So what this means is for those that are newer to the whole trading scene is a stop loss. If natural gas or you gas 
begins to drop, it will automatically cut losses for me when it passes this specific price point. And the price point that I set was at 1359. So if you guys drops, it at least manages some form of risk. And one of the things that we've shared with you guys before is how many of you guys, you know, at least in my experience, it's like, it, it's great when things go green, right? It's great when you're just getting started and you take a couple good trades and you might be listening to other people. But at the end of the day, the, the goal for all of us, right? And, and correct me if I'm wrong. The goal for all of us that are watching right now is you don't want to be dependent on someone to make your money, right? Just like I don't ask people where I should buy and where I should sell. I would assume that that is something that you guys, you know, something that you guys are working towards as well. And it's not that you have to work towards being a perfect trader. It's not that you're not, not ever going to make mistakes once you make it. It's that, you know, it takes time to understand where you see your value and how to build your list of criteria. And one of the things that we're seeing right now is natural gas is getting rejected by the EMA line, something that we obviously saw right on over here. And here, there it goes. It's about to get um, stop lost out. So here it goes. Let's see if it actually gets stop lost out. So my stop loss is at 13.59. So this is, this is the very important part that I try to share with you guys is that the stock market is not like a nine to five job. I come from a nine to five background and just because you invest hours out of your day does not compensate you a direct output of pay. It's you can literally spend weeks, months, years and still not make any money. You could even lose money in this market. And that shouldn't come as a surprise in any creative market, real estate, e-commerce, starting your own business, entrepreneurship and trading in the stock market. It all comes at some form of risk. It is. So this is something that every market has in common. It all comes at some form of risk. So the only thing that you can do is manage that risk. It's, it's the only thing that we can do. And one of the things, there it goes. So my stop loss just got triggered. Uh, I got, whoa. So that, that's one of the downsides. Um, oh, and I still have one open share, my bad. Uh, but that's one of the downsides when it comes down to overall stop losses versus a stop limit is that, I don't know if you guys noticed, but um, it looks like a portion of my position was filled at 13.585 and another portion was filled at 13.52. So unfortunately, um, you know, I, because it, it, it pretty much sells at a market order, uh, when it fills, when it meets that specific stop loss, um, it will fill and if it moves quicker beyond that specific price point, I will get filled anywhere within that specific candle. So that's the downside. If you ever want to control exactly where you get filled, that would be with the stop limit. But with that, you kind of run the risk of, you know, potentially not getting filled if it pushes through that uh, a little too quick. So I wanted to see if I can uh, answer any of your questions. Um, I'm still, again, um, warming up and, and trying to see what it is that uh, we have going on right now with natural gas. Natural gas is acting um, a little crazy. So we just made new lows on the 180 day chart. I'm gonna set my alerts and follow up with it when an opportunity presents itself, but definitely excited. So as of right now, it's probably gonna be in my best interest uh, to pay attention to DGAS as this thing just nonstop continues to remain bullish. It continues to make higher highs. And of course, it's much easier uh, to make money when the overall direction is in your favor. I just kind of see DGAS. This is kind of the pickle that I'm in right now. I kind of see DGAS to be more on the overbought side than on the oversold side. So that's the only thing that I'm like, kind of like referring back to is, I don't know if you guys agree with me, but uh, I do agree natural gas is bearish. This is probably not something that we want to touch right now, but with the overall idea that Diaz is so overbought, not just on the day, but based off of yesterday's performance as well, that I'm just kind of uneasy about the idea of going into this specific position as it's so overextended on the day. Because like we know, it doesn't have to pull back, but it could make sense on why it, on why it could. So no signs of a reversal yet. Can you explain why you entered you? Yeah. So um, I originally only went in, so that's a good question, Armani. Uh, I originally went in only with 100 shares. 
um, and 100 shares based off of what I'm trading with is only a fraction of what I normally trade with. So it's like if you trade with $1,000 and you go in with you know $10 or $50 into a position, it's just to warm up and get a feel of how the market's trading. There's a lot of volatility right now, so uh, but one of the things that began to happen is natural gas began to push up and DGAS began to pull back. So then that's when I added an additional 500 shares. Uh, should I have done that? Um, I mean, no, not necessarily, but uh, one of the things that I was trying to test out is because we broke above uh, the EMA line very quickly, I saw there to be you know that upside potential, but it literally just broke above the EMA line and then pulled on right back just like it did before. So um, I, I made it super clear that I saw this previous pattern. I just, I wanted to, you know, I, I saw an opportunity and I wanted to take the risk, right? Um, still warming up for the day, trying to get a feel of how it's trading. And I'm trying to see if natural gas is oversold enough to then begin to form a reversal. So I have my alert set. So I'm excited to see what it has to offer. Alrighty, let's see if we have, um, I wanted to do or at least answer a couple of your guys' questions while I'm waiting for natural gas to consolidate. So um, right now we're trying to see if it's going to continue to sell off or begin to push up. So I'm going to hold off right now. So Kasim, so excited to be part of the Learn Plan Profit. Uh, of course, happy to have you here. So uh, if you have any questions along the way, just feel free to also direct message me on Discord and I'd be more than happy to assist you. So let's see. So how would you recommend a 14 year old with $500 that they should get started? So first of all, uh, killer cheese, uh, make sure you have your parents permission. Um, that's something that you definitely, we, we want to make sure that we do not overlook. And with that in mind, um, I think it's great that you've saved $500. Uh, I don't personally think that you need it, right? When you're learning how to trade, your focus should be to learn. Uh, there's great ways on how you can get started for free. You can go on YouTube, you can go on Google and search up paper trading simulation training you're going to make a lot of mistakes when you're just getting started and especially because you're younger there might be the, the learning curve might be a little bit more difficult and again difficult doesn't mean impossible so um, all i'm here to empower you is to make you aware of the different options that you have available and a free alternative is definitely one of those so i hope that that can guide you in the right direction um, all right, here it goes. Natural gas again beginning to consolidate. Uh, so do you use level two? Of course. So I normally use level two to have a better understanding of when we're approaching previous support levels, when we're approaching previous resistance levels, and being able to see people's um, overall position sizes on top of that. If I'm trying to get filled when I'm buying and selling, it allows me to make a little bit more of effective buys and sells by understanding where people are buying and where people are selling. So I appreciate that question as well. All right, so thank you, learning a lot. Uh, uh, are options a good way to invest? So um, I I personally do not trade options. I am also here, I have never been a person to try to convince you to not trade something you see value in. I wanna remind you that um, I don't know why you're tuning on in to this live trading session. I don't know if it's because you wanted to see what I do, uh, you wanted to see what it's like to trade in the stock market, you might be interested in Forex, you might be interested in options, you might be interested in e-commerce. All I have to share with you is whatever your story is and whatever your motive is, it's no one had to convince me to pursue the stock market. I was intrigued by it, I was intrigued by the challenges, and I was interested in how I could scale. Yes, it was difficult, but it was something that I really enjoyed working towards. And it was because no one had to convince me and I was intrinsically motivated to pursue this, that when things got tough and when things got difficult, I didn't give up because I, was, I had the free will to want to continue to pursue this. So all I have to say to you is whatever market whatever niche, whatever career path, or whatever it is that you choose to pursue, make sure it's something that you are truly interested in and understand the value of. Yes, the stock market is not difficult. I mean, yes, the stock market is difficult. I apologize. It is difficult. But it's, I think, the difficult things in life that are worth working towards. So that's, that's just my opinion. So is options an alternative? Of course. Is it something that I do? It is not. Is it something that I'm gonna to try to convince you to not pursue? Of course not. I think that you should pursue whatever area, whatever niche you see the most value in. So I hope that that can guide you in the right direction. 
Alrighty. Uh, why do you use Thinkorswim? Thinkorswim is simply a platform that I use. It is not the best. It is not the worst. It is what I use. Don't use it if you don't want to. It's, I'm not here to convince you. So it's like, why do you wear Vans? Well, well, you like it. You like them more than Converse. It's just preference. Uh, so Ricky, why didn't you, oh shoot, I didn't mean to delete that, I apologize. So I'll, I'll read it out for everyone. So Ricky, why didn't you short D, uh, you gas if you had a downtrend? So first of all, I explained that you don't need a short D, uh, you gas. You can just go into D gas, which goes up when you gas goes down. But one of the things that I pointed out, and again, I'm still warming up for the day. It's the overall idea that I saw D gas to be so overbought that I just didn't find it to be a good deal. But now we're seeing this consistency aspect that, hey, it's proving that it's still bullish. So now I'm, I have at least the reassurance that, hey, you know, this thing is continuing to uptrend. Uh, it's the confidence, right? And because I've said it before, every day presents new challenges and new struggles. This is something that I encounter every day. And I think this is why it's so important for these live trading sessions for you guys to be able to be reminded every single day that you know it, it's okay to make mistakes like yeah i did make a mistake by going into you guys but it's 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 a risk that i took with the understanding that the upside outweighed the downside i had my risk management in place and i had some form of structure even if it didn't play out according to plan and sometimes that's you know the best we can do especially as the day is just getting started market literally just opened 22 minutes ago um, so what I love to remind you guys is we have nothing but time, right? So, uh, let me know, let me know if you guys are, um, enjoying this, uh, live trading session, if I'm sharing a couple good things. And again, uh, it really does help out this specific video. If you guys would like us to host future live trading sessions, all we ask you to do is to smash that like button. It gives us great feedback and definitely helps out the channel. So, um, I appreciate it. So. Uh, is this video going to be available tomorrow? Yeah, John, this video should be available even 30 minutes after we host the live stream. YouTube just processes it and then posts it on my channel. So um, feel free to you know follow up with this video at your own convenience. If you have to go to work, if you have to go to school, trust me, I understand uh, priorities come first. I'm, I'm here every day, right? So if you're part of the Learn Plan Profit Group, I am literally here every day. So it's not like you miss out on one week and that's the end of the world it's it's i am here every single day uh well monday through friday right market's not open on the weekends but uh how much is learn plan profit it's uh right now it's 75 dollars off so i don't know how many more spots are open uh, people normally wait for our free live trading session because we run our biggest sell you guys could refresh your screen and it's the first link down below if you're ready to join the learn plan profit team so right now we have natural gas back at this general um or just so you guys could see We'll see if we can take, uh, what do you guys think? Uh, right now, it just continuously is getting rejected by this overall EMA line. So right now, natural gas is just continuously getting rejected and rejected and rejected. Do you guys see that? So I still have my one little share, my one little share of, of you guys. So I, I accidentally bought another share. Uh, I had 601, I'm not too sure why, but uh, I sold the 600. So I'm gonna hold off on this. I still think you guys is a little bit more on the overbought side. Um, but I need to wait for more confirmation on this as of right now. Uh, so what would you say the confirmation would be for you guys? So first of all, you guys has a lot to prove. It's not only just trading below the, the EMA line, but it's trading below the middle VWAP and it's trading below the SMA line. So altogether, do I think that you guys is going to make an amazing comeback? No. Uh, do I think that it has the potential to break above the EMA line and trade up to the middle VWAP or trade up to the SMA line? Yes. Do I think it's going to make higher highs and go from red to green on the day? No. So you have to understand that direction is still key and direction is still very important and only trade opportunities that you see value in and have confirmation of. So what I'm doing right now is by simply setting my alerts, I can follow up with it once its direction is a little bit more clear, right? There's, there's three focuses that I have. I like focusing on direction. I like to focus on getting something for a good deal and then, you know, waiting for the overall uh, confirmation and making sure that the upside outweighs the downside. So right now you might be asking, well, why aren't you going into Diaz with the overall idea that yes, it does meet the overall criteria of direction. It does meet the overall criteria of confirmation, but it's not a good deal. So it doesn't meet all my criteria. You might have an opinion about Ricky, you're 
you're dumb for not going into degas trust me you know we're all wired in different ways and if you are someone that sees so much value in degas because it's so bullish right now all power to you i'm just someone that has my own criteria for my own money and it's how i specifically want to trade we're all entitled to our own opinions and we only take risk that makes sense to us you should never take a trade i, I don't care what what group you're a part of I don't care what community you paid for. You should never take a position that you were told to take. This is the part that I don't understand for, for everyone watching right now. If your actual goal is to be able to do this on your own in the future, how do you expect to ever get there when you're being told what to do? There's a big difference, right? There's a big difference from understanding what to do versus being told what to do. The goal should be to be self-sufficient. So make sure that you dedicate time to understand the do's and the don'ts. Is it easier to be told what to do? Of course. Is it more worth it to understand what to do? In my opinion, it is. Because you don't have to depend on anyone. The goal for everyone that's part of TechBot Solutions, Learn, Plan, Profit, or any of our groups, right, has to be that you go through what it is that we have to offer and that you build a foundation in which you can build off of and go on your own, that you're not dependent on this, that yes, you can refer back to us and we're here to assist you when you need us, but not that you have to use us every single month, right? Uh, and there it goes. So Natural Gas just had a really nice push. All right, let's see. So what do you guys think right now? Still getting rejected by the EMA line. So right now, DGAS would be more at a potential support level. So I wanna see if I can answer your guys' questions as well. Um, I still don't have full on confirmation. Natural gas can still get rejected here, so I'm still gonna be a little bit more patient. So uh, so how do you validate the, off, uh, the upside uh, to offset the downside? So a very quick example, let's say, um, and again, this is just an example, uh, Biz Manuel. Uh, manual, right? So uh, right now, first of all, this is a descending pattern, so this might not be the best example. Uh, but let's say that we were we were to get full confirmation. Let's say that natural gas was trading at 1.79. The upside, based off of you know where it could get rejected, is around the middle view up. So it could continue to push up, and the overall upside from 1.79 uh, could be you know all the way up here to 1.5 percent. So the triple leverage ETN would be three times that. So that would be you know 4.5 percent with the overall idea that if I cut losses, so if I got in at 1.79, I would cut losses when it breaks below the EMA line, which is 0.44. So the upside outweighs the downside. And you just wanna make sure that you do your part in getting in when it makes sense to you and that the risk to reward ratio meets your criteria. So I hope that that example just gets you a little bit closer to your overall goal. All righty. Uh, so this is a really good question. And I, uh, if you have any experience with this, I want you to answer it. I, I know my answer, but you guys feel free to share your own. So this is from Jonathan and it, he's asking, is it less risky to trade stocks with up and coming FDA approval? So I'm going to give it a couple of seconds. I'm going to give it a couple of seconds for you guys to share your opinion. Is it less risky? to trade something that has an up and coming FDA approval. In my experience, I don't know what you're, if you're trading a bioscience, a pharmaceutical, no. There's usually, in my experience, that's all I'm speaking from, usually when there's news of a company pending FDA approval, the market when, there, when something's pending and there's news that, hey, it could potentially get approved by the FDA, there's news that just causes more demand leading up to that point. But if it does not get FDA approval, what do you think is going to happen? So because it's pending, they can use that news to try to push the stock because they're working towards something. But if it doesn't get approved, which it normally doesn't, in my experience, and again, please feel free to share your own opinion, I've learned that it's all hype. These, these pumps are very short lived and this is the perfect way to put it. It's just speculation. It's they're hoping that it passes FDA approval. I do agree. 
that there are a few that do pass FDA approval and they do push up. But when it comes down to the numbers and the odds and, and, and how often that happens, there's a personal reason on why I do not trade bioscience and pharmaceutical. And Jonathan, all I'm here to say is um, I am just sp- uh, simply sharing my opinion about I. this is why I stay away from it. Um, it it's too high risk, high reward for me. Um, and I wouldn't even say it's too high reward. It's too high of a risk with the reward not even, in my opinion, being that great either. And it doesn't happen enough uh, for me to want to pay attention to it. My focus is consistency. My focus is understanding what is going on. And yes, everything comes at some form of risk. Everything. Everything comes at some form of risk, but I like controlled variables. And that's a very uncontrolled variable for a hope of news. So 3,500 people are watching. How many likes do we have? Like 500? I'm going to call you guys out. You guys want us to host these free live trading sessions all the time, but you can't even like the video. I'm a little offended. I'm honestly a little offended. So how much is Think or Swim? Killer Cheese, for everyone tuning in, how much is Think or Swim? For those that are within the United States. How much is it? It's free. Uh, well, it's not. I mean, they don't charge commission is what we're trying to say when it comes down to trades. So, yeah. So it doesn't it doesn't cost anything to have an account. Um, and if you fund your account, I think like $500 or $1,000 you get. Yeah. So um, it doesn't cost you anything to trade on the platform. But let me remind you, you there's a lot of brokerages now that do not charge to trade. I'm here to remind you that you have options. Charles Schwab, Fidelity, TD Ameritrade, Interactive Brokers, you have Webull, you have Robinhood, you have so many options. Please never choose something just because I use it. I'm, I'm not here to promote, I don't care, I, I generally don't care if you use TD Ameritrade. Uh, it almost kind of excites me more that when you use other platforms because I know that, you know, if you wanna use what I use, that's fine, but it almost, empowers me more that you're your own version of your own self and you're your own person when you go and do your own thing. I love hearing people that like, hey Ricky, I like the concept that you use when it comes down to trading you gas and degas, but I have a big focus on crude oil. I have a big focus on gold. I have a big focus on tech. That is something that is showing me signs that, hey, you are your own person and you're becoming self-sufficient. That should be the goal. I've been following you for roughly a year or more. Finally, the, the, uh, made the decision uh, to join Learn Plan Profit right now. We're looking forward to it. Joseph Ortas, happy to have you as a part of the team. So if you have any questions, even before you sign up um, or even after you sign up, please, I hope that you know that I'm one direct message away. So you get access to the course, the daily live trading sessions every single day, right? You can review any of the previous live trading sessions from when we first started. And on top of that, you get access to the private Discord chat which just allows you to network with other Learn Plan Profit members that have gone through the course itself. So, uh, hey Ricky, how often do you do these live videos? Every day, every day at Market Open for the Learn Plan Profit group. So when I do them for free, once a month at the end of the month, the last Friday. So, all righty. Course is 100%, smash that like button. I like it. So again, natural gas right now is, is still selling off. I'm I'm eager to take another position, but I just, guys, I, I want to. One of the things that we talked about this week, how many of you guys related, I don't know if you guys related enough to that video, uh, but sometimes, especially when you're just getting started, you're just always eager to take trades, to try to, you know, as soon as the market opens, you're like, all right, what can I buy? What can I buy? And one of the things that I've like tried to understand and make sense of is that, you know, opportunity needs to present itself. It's not on a schedule and it doesn't have to present itself every single day. Um, this is why I think it's so important that like, you know, you set your alerts and follow up with it when it makes sense to you, not when you want to trade. So uh, I'm excited to, you know, see if I can take a couple more trades for you guys. And if not, at least for our Learn Plan Profit group, I post updates um, in the trade ideas section. So I can update you guys on kind of like what I'm paying attention to, what I find overbought, oversold and stuff like that. And that's normally posted here throughout the day uh, since I trade for about, you know, two to three hours. Um, so 
Here it goes. It's trying to. Do you guys see this? It's definitely trying to reverse. I'm going to, I'm not going to do it right now, but I'm going to just watch my position size. Something, I'm just going to just keep it small. So if it breaks above the EMA line, we might, we might have to little, little send on, on Friday for the boys. I'm just, just totally kidding. I just like making you guys laugh. Sometimes trading can be a little boring, but um, definitely need to wait for confirmation. So All right. George Clark, what mouse and keyboard do you use? Um, Apple. Uh, nothing that I use is special in any way. You, you don't have, you don't have to use any of the, um, like computers or desktop or anything that I use. Everything is, is, you know, the idea when it comes down to trading is your job as a trader is obviously to have access to a platform, but to seek opportunity. You can do it off your phone. Is it more difficult? Yeah, it's harder to see, but it's possible. Um, is it easier to do it on a laptop and with more screens? To a point, uh, but obviously there's there's a point where too much becomes ineffective, right? If I were to walk into Walmart and I have a hundred options for peanut butter, you know, it's gonna be difficult for me to understand what peanut butter is the best for me. But when you keep things simple and you have maybe two or three options, you can do your due diligence on each set of peanut butter and decide based off of what you were informed on the best option for you. Sometimes simplicity is is one of the most important parts to success, right? Here it goes. So, all right, I'm gonna have to wait for a little bit more. I almost took a position right now. I'm eager, I'm eager guys. So, all right, come on, Alan, no form of self-promotion here. I, I don't understand. Now, one of the things that I want to remind you is everyone tuning in right now, please understand that I only have one Instagram account. I only have one Facebook account. I only have one Discord chat, right, or profile. I never message you first. I don't care on what platform it is. With all due respect, I will never message you first. I will never ask for personal information. I will never ask to trade for you. There's so many fake accounts. We've tried to work with Instagram to get verified and it's still something that we have in the works. Please make sure that you understand that I never message you first. Anytime that you question if it's actually me, if I talk about Bitcoin, if I talk about crypto, if I talk about Forex, it's not me. I never message you first. Please understand that. I've, I make numerous posts almost every single month and all you need to do is share it with me and report that account, that's all. So I just wanna make sure that you guys don't think that, I think there's a, a fake account that does like money management and stuff like that. Never have I ever, nor will I ever do any of that. So please understand that. All right, so natural gas is still dropping. It's a good thing that we hold back. Uh, so how much money have you planned to trade today? What, uh, what's your quota in investments? Today? So it's, it's not investments, right? So I trade, so it's a little bit different. Uh, but my daily goal is anywhere from around $500 to $750. One of the things that I want to remind you is that a goal is something to work towards, not something that you have to experience every single day. Every day presents new challenges and yeah, am I pretty consistent? I'm one of the only people that recaps every day. I show my profits, I show my losses every day and I have to pat myself on the back. Yes, I'm I'm pretty consistent. Do I aim for very aggressive goals? No. A lot of you guys know that how much money I trade with. On average, I like to trade with about 50,000 when it comes down to the position size. So it's not very difficult for me to make that 1% if I see and wait for that opportunity. Uh, but, you know, oh my God, dude, these freaking spam accounts. I don't even know what to, what to say about these, but... Um, yeah, it's, it's a goal is something to work towards something that should be both challenging, but not so challenging that you forget about your principles, right? Uh, you should get a mod. We normally have a, a mod in this chat. So I'm, I'm kind of upset that 
that are not here. I'm, I'm upset that you guys woke up, started tuning into this live trading session, and our, our mods didn't. <laughs> have you bought yet? No, I, I didn't buy. So I still have my one share. My one share. I'm gonna let this one run. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold it, a little, little hodl. Totally kidding, I, I can sell the one share, but right now, where's DGAS at? DGAS is do non-stop. From market open, where are we at? 6.7% or 6.4%, I like that. Oh, Ismail is here, okay. Well, is ish. I mean, there's people spamming the chat with like, join my Forex signal or something, or Telegram or whatever spam accounts they have. So, yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, you guys cracked me up. I just I have Justin now messaging me too. He's like, I'm here too. It just moves too quick. I can't I can't see it all. That is hilarious. I'm totally kidding. Now we have we have a great team. So, um, alrighty. What's what's one of your guys's favorite things? Like, what's one of your guys's goals? Um, if I were to ask you, what's one of your guys's goals? I like, why are you here? Like, why are you watching? You're not watching or didn't wake up in the morning to watch this free live trading session because I'm funny or because I'm entertaining. It's, it's what about it? Like what, what's your motivation? I, I, I've shared it with you guys multiple times. I was, you know, very young when I first started and I wanted to buy a GTR. That was, there's nothing wrong with that being my, what sparked my motivation, right? That's, that was my spark. That was my drive. I was just like, I was so passionate about it. What's yours? I'm here to learn. Pay for my daycare. I like that. Buy a house by 21. Okay. I want a giraffe. Giraffes are my motivation. I like that. Freedom. I'm here because I suck. All right. So one of the first things that I want to share with you guys is um, we all start at ground level, right? At level one right? And whatever your motivation is, one of the things that I, and I don't, I'm not too sure if I'm going to take another trade just because I'm, I'm sorry for the trading aspect. Um, natural gas just isn't confirming a reversal. So, uh, but I do want to leave you with this out of this entire live stream. I, I really hope that this hits home for some of you. Um, I'm someone that um, I do well, right? I'm very blessed to be in the position that I am in life. And um yeah, my motivation initially started at a very young age because I wanted to buy a GTR. But once I grew older and, and once I matured and once I really began to make money, um, my focus kind of like shifted, right? I wanted to work towards being able to like buy a house, right? Uh, I was going to school. I was going to ASU Poly. I wanted to work towards a life in which that I can provide a better future for my future family. I had a girlfriend at the time. And uh, one of the things that I want to remind you is that like, I'm I'm never I'm never gonna be someone that's gonna try to convince you that you know school isn't right for you or your your nine to five job isn't right for you because growing up with the way that I did and going to work with my dad you know my dad being like someone that laid down tile right he was a general contractor and from middle school to high school I would go with him on the weekends and he would remind me every day that if I didn't want to do this for the rest of my life, I had to work hard and do well in school. I wanted to pursue an engineering degree. I wanted to become a project engineer. And all I'm here to remind you is that there is never one way. There is never one perfect way to get the same end result. There's many different ways on how you can build your own path to still get that same end result for being able to pay for daycare, for being able to have maybe a little bit more free time to spend time with your family, to be able to, you know, work towards being able to buy a house. One of the things that I want to share with you is one of the most empowering parts 
and journey of my life. I'm 25 years old, so I don't have a lot to speak from, for, right? I, I might be older for, than some of you, but I might not be older than all of you. One of the things that I want to remind you is that when I was going to school full time, and this was just a couple years ago, right? In 2015, I moved from California to Arizona. I got accepted to the ASU Polytechnic campus and I loved it. I, I loved going to school. I love learning new things. There's nothing wrong with going to school if you're eager to learn. A college and a university is an amazing environment where you can truly surround yourself with like-minded people. The incubator effect, right? It's the whole point of networking. People can say, entrepreneurs can say, hey, school isn't for everyone. I agree. Nothing, nothing is for everyone. It's, let's get that through our head, right? There's nothing wrong with wanting to learn more. I also had a job. I worked at Verizon. I worked full time. And if it wasn't for that job, I wouldn't have qualified for my first house at age 20. So what I'm here to share with you is, yes, I was trading at the time. Yes, I was buying and reselling cars. Yes, I was doing things that other online influencers were, were sharing. But on top of that, I wanted to do my part in building my future and not having any excuse. So if that meant that I had to work twice, three times as hard as everyone else, because yes, I was doing things to try to make money on the side, but on top of that, I was going to school to hopefully one day land a job, right? To then also work a job to provide a stable income. I wanted there to be no reason on why I didn't make it. And all I'm here to share with you is I'm never going to be here to convince you that the stock market is the only option for you. All I'm here to remind you is that how I've scaled and how I've grown as a person in the past couple of years because of everything that we've been able to grow to, it's unbelievable to now experience where a thousand dollar day now is something that I experience fairly often. But it was because I scaled to the point of where it is that I am now, because I really allowed that opportunity to present itself with the time that I invested when I had a job, when I was going to school, right? It's you build up to a point where you earn the overall idea of being able to have these very successful days. So all I wanna leave you with is if you're someone that has a job, if you're someone that has or is going to school, please never put yourself down because you might not be the spit in example of someone that might be an online entrepreneur. We all come from different backgrounds, we all have different goals, we all have different motivations, and there's so many different ways on how we can still get that same end result. And that's pretty much all I wanna leave you guys with. And as I was speaking, Natural Gas just had a nice little push. So we'll, we'll see where it goes from here. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I just, I, I really dislike the overall idea of um, people trying to always encourage one another that there's only one way to be successful. And there's not, I, I love hearing that people love their nine to five job. I don't find that to be there be anything wrong with that. If you enjoy what you do, money is is money doesn't bring fulfillment. Money can buy you a lot of things, but money does not buy fulfillment. You know, I've I've met people where regardless of the pay, you know, we have teachers that are kids are teachers for kids with special needs and they don't care about the pay. They just get so much fulfillment being that true example and having a positive impact in other people's life. And I think that's you know, a beautiful thing. It's pursue a career and a path, not just because of the monetary aspect, but because it brings you fulfillment and it would generally make you happy. Luckily, I like the challenges that the stock market brings. And luckily, uh, the markets that I personally am interested in are rewarding in the monetary aspect. So, um, but there's nothing that we can do about that, right? It's Let's, let's let's make the most of it and let's make it count, right? It's, it's not about being perfect, but it's working towards being as close to perfect as possible. So I appreciate you, Frank. Thank you, thank you. Uh, you um, you are religious. Uh, what is your favorite prayer? So yeah, I, I, I grew up Catholic, right? Um, but it's, if it's okay, um, I, I kind of like to stay neutral when it comes down to that. 
um, on like our social platforms. But um, I, I can't say that I have like a favorite prayer there. Alrighty. So what do you what do you guys think? I'm gonna, I'm gonna take another position. All right, and then we'll set our stop loss because the only way that we can make money is if we control how much money we give back. And match you guys at least today is is infamous for that, right? All right, just confirming everything. There it goes. So it's pushing up right now. It's looking good, feeling good. All righty. So, um, but yeah, I'm going to end it here, guys. I don't want to take too much of your guys' time. I actually just noticed that we've been live for almost an hour, and this was only supposed to be um, 30 minutes long. So, Ricky, how did you manage everything along with your 9-to-5 job? Did you have a video? Uh, people love to ask, you know, that I, I just made it happen. I... I never partied, I never went out, I didn't have any friends, and I'm not saying that that's the best way to do it, it's I just wanted to do my part, and I didn't care about my necessarily happiness at that point. I was I was working like a dog, but it felt good. It like It felt good because I was so busy to not have any other option, and I just made it happen. Um, but yeah, thank you. I really do appreciate you guys' time. I hope that you guys enjoyed these uh, this free live trading session, I know is more of like a consultation almost at that point, but you know, every day brings new challenges. Some come better than others. And, uh, today, you know, we at least made the most of it. So I hope that some of the words, at least I spoke with you today, um, are something that you can take and, and make the most of it. But what I want to leave you with is again, just surround yourself with people that truly empower you to be the best version of yourself. So, um, I really hope that we earned your thumbs up. If you guys have any feedback on how we can make these free live trading sessions better, uh, feel free to send me a disc, uh, direct message on Discord. Uh, we do have the second link down below. You guys can refresh your screen uh, and it will bring you on over to our free Discord chat. TechBot Solutions, we have over 50,000 members within our free Discord chat. But if you're ready and you like what you saw today, um, this will give you lifetime access to join the Learn Plan Profit team. And that's going to be that first link down below. It's our biggest sell ever. We don't offer this. Again, there's only 20 spots. So when and if you're ready, there's 20 spots that are open. And that's that first link down below. Like always, team, continue working hard. Continue following the dreams. Let your passion be a drive to success. I wish you guys an amazing and safe weekend. Please stay safe out there. Don't be dirty. Wash your hands. And like always, <laughs> let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take it.